In this episode of The Answered Patient on Diabetes, we will discuss the different drug regimens, including insulin and oral medications currently available for treating and managing diabetes. Type 1 diabetics must take daily injections of insulin in order to survive because their own pancreas is unable to produce it. For those suffering from type 2 diabetes, diet and exercise can go a long way to managing the disease. But in some cases, even type 2 diabetics may also need to take injected insulin. This may be because the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas become exhausted as they have to manufacture more and more insulin to overcome the body's insulin resistance. What is insulin and how does it function in the body? Insulin is a hormone produced by the beta cells of your pancreas. It helps to move glucose from the bloodstream to all the cells of the body, where it's used for energy. Without insulin, glucose cannot enter cells and instead builds up in the blood. This buildup of glucose in the blood can cause complications throughout the body. For all diabetics, keeping blood sugar levels as close to normal as possible is the key to preventing these complications. If your doctor tells you that you need to take insulin injections to manage your blood glucose levels, it's important that you closely follow his or her instructions. There are a number of different types of insulin. Generally, insulin is categorized by onset, or how quickly it starts to work in the body, and by duration, or how long it is effective in the body. We'll discuss the two major categories of insulin called bolus and basal. Bolus insulin, sometimes called mealtime insulin, is a rapid-acting, short-lived insulin taken before meals to control the rise of blood glucose levels immediately after eating. Bolus insulin is usually given in combination with the basal insulin, which is longer-acting. Basal insulin controls blood sugar levels between meals and throughout the night. Sometimes taken once daily, it can be used alone or in combination with oral medications or rapid-acting insulin. There are different types of basal insulin with different ranges of onset after they are injected. They are regular insulin with an onset of 30 minutes, intermediate insulin, which begins to act in two to four hours, and long-lasting insulin, which typically works in about six to 10 hours. Premixed insulins, which combine bolus and basal insulins, are also available. Choosing the best insulin depends on many factors, including the level of your daily activities, the type, time, and amount of food you eat, how stable your blood sugar levels are, and how closely you're able to monitor your blood sugar levels throughout the day. One possible side effect to be aware of with insulin is hypoglycemia. This happens when your blood glucose levels drop too low. Patients with hypoglycemia may feel shaky, irritable, or nervous. Diabetics usually keep certain food items, such as hard candy, glucose tablets, or other foods that provide a rapid source of glucose. If this occurs, your doctor will help modify your insulin intake to tailor a treatment plan for you. At the present time, insulin cannot be taken orally because it is destroyed in the stomach. Insulin is injected under the skin into the fat layer below, usually in the arm, thigh, or abdominal wall. The majority of diabetics inject insulin with a syringe or hypodermic needle. There are other alternatives including insulin pens, insulin jet injectors, and insulin pumps. The pump is connected to a small catheter or tube placed under the skin. Individuals can adjust the infusion of insulin according to their lifestyle. This method allows excellent control of blood glucose levels. New forms of insulin and insulin delivery methods are being tested all the time. In 2005, the FDA approved an inhaled insulin powder. Researchers are currently working to develop new products such as oral insulin, insulin patches, and nasal insulin sprays. However, these are not yet available for use by the general public. In addition to insulin, there are several different oral medications used to treat type 2 diabetes. Some of these medications stimulate the pancreas to produce more insulin, while others work to overcome the body's insulin resistance. All diabetes medications sold in the United States today are members of five drug classes, which work in different ways to lower blood glucose levels. We'll talk a bit about how each class works. 
Sulfonylureas stimulate the beta cells of the pancreas to release more insulin. They are generally taken one to two times a day before meals. Meglitinides are drugs that also stimulate the beta cells to release insulin. They are taken before the three daily meals. Because sulfonylureas and meglitinides stimulate the release of insulin, hypoglycemia or low blood glucose is a possible side effect. Biguinides lower blood glucose levels primarily by decreasing the amount of glucose produced by the liver. They also help to lower blood glucose levels by making muscle tissue more sensitive to insulin so glucose can be absorbed. They are usually taken two times a day. Thiazolidine diones help insulin work better in the muscle and fat and also reduce glucose production in the liver. They are taken once or twice a day with food. Alpha-glucosidase inhibitors help the body to lower blood glucose levels by blocking the breakdown of starches, such as bread, potatoes, and pasta in the intestine into glucose. They also slow the breakdown of some sugars, such as table sugar. Their action slows the rise in blood glucose levels after a meal. They should be taken with the first bite of a meal. Many type 2 diabetics benefit from a combination of oral medications in addition to insulin. Overall, it's important to know, one medication may work for you, but then stop being effective. This is not unusual. Your doctor will work with you to arrive at the proper drug combination that provides the best control of your glucose levels. As with any other medication, be sure to immediately report to your doctor any side effects you may experience. He or she may be able to prescribe another drug combination that's better suited to you. Now that you know about the various drug therapies for diabetes, you'll want to watch our personal stories chapter where you'll meet real healthcare professionals and patients who deal with this very common disease every day. Thanks for watching.